all right what's up guys i know it's been a month since the last video uh my apologies i've been dealing with uh midterms schoolwork internship interviews all that type of stuff so yeah today we're gonna be doing tier four um and without further ado let's just get right into it all right so first off we have the drop a tribe and drop a stones now high in the himalayas near tibet is a tribe of people known as the Drapa. these people have inhabited a brutal climate of ice and high altitudes for thousands of years and it wasn't until the 20th century that western explorers discovered that this tribe of dwarf-like people existed the associated press stated that some 120 dwarfish beings have been discovered in the sichuan province in a so-called village of the dwarfs now the Drapa stones are said by some UFOologists to be a series of at least 716 circular stone discs dating back 12,000 years, on which tiny hieroglyph-like markings can be found. Each disc is claimed to measure up to one foot in diameter and carry two grooves originating from a hole in their center in the form of a double spiral. An alleged 1962 translation of the stones goes as follows. The story is said that the people of the region, named the Ham tribe, witnessed a crash landing from the sky. After investigating where the crash took place, the people found other beings from another planet. One translation states, the Drapa came down from the clouds in their aircraft. Our men, women, and children hid in the caves ten times before sunrise. They realized that the newcomers had peaceful intentions. The extraterrestrials are said to have been unable to fix their crash spacecraft, and so they stayed to live with the people of the Ham tribe. Many interpreters suggest that this inscription points to interbreeding between species. The Descendants of the Ham and Dropa tribes are unique to the human genotype because of their irregularities with the surrounding tribes of people in the area. The Dropa and Ham tribes are extremely short in stature, with the average height of 4'2 and average weight of 60 pounds. They have disproportionate sized heads compared to their slight body size and large eye sockets with blue irises. Nexus 7 Nexus 7 is basically the idea that aliens are already here, but they're using mind control on humans to make us not realize that they're here. It's basically just a theory of aliens using like a large telepathic contact program on human beings all over the world. And it goes as far to say that hundreds of thousands of people have been abducted and returned, but only don't remember because they had their memories wiped. Yeah. A cosmism. A cosmism denies the reality of the universe, seeing it as only a complete illusion. It's basically the view that God is the sole and ultimate reality and that finite objects and events in the universe have no independent existence. Lord Pakal's Time Machine. The sarcophagus of King Pakal is one of the most talked about subjects when it comes to ancient alien theory. The lid of the sarcophagus has some pretty interesting depictions on it. An ancient alien theorist proposed that it depicts King Pakal in some sort of spaceship during takeoff, and some people argue that his hands appear to be manipulating some sort of machinery. His foot is located on a pedal while he is breathing through some sort of breathing apparatus. One of the most mysterious things about King Pakal was that the remains found inside his coffin don't seem to match him. The analysis of the wear on the skeleton's teeth places the age of the owner at death as 40 years younger than Pekal would have been at the time of his death. Black Hope Curse Now this is about a couple who moved into a neighborhood in Houston, Texas. The man's name was Sam Haney and he moved in with his wife, Judith. Once they got into the neighborhood and they were in their house, they got a visit from a man who talked to the husband and told him that there were dead people buried in their backyard. The husband started digging in the backyard and eventually he got to a point where he opened up a container and found the remains of a human. After that, he notified the local authorities. An investigation was started on the land and they found more caskets with more skeletal remains. It was found out that the land that they were on was a cemetery called Black Hope, which was designated for African Americans. And the last burial there had occurred somewhere around the year of 1939. After this event, the Haney's, along with several of their neighbors, began to experience many unusual events. 
They would hear doors open and close, items would go missing, they'd hear talking and whispers, and notice that their houseplants began to die. Everyone felt a high level of uneasiness. Electronics would turn on and off, as well as water faucets. And eventually, someone even died of a heart attack. Several people reported observing ghostly apparitions and reported feeling terrified. Today, new people live in the neighborhood, as all the people that used to live there were scared away by the Black Hope curse. And ironically, no reports have come up since. Bouvet Island Lifeboat. Now imagine a place that is nearly covered in ice and surrounded by the coldest ocean in the world and you have you would have a good idea of what Bouvet Island is like. It's not Antarctica but Antarctica is the closest piece of land to the island. In 1964, Lieutenant Commander Alan Crawford was sent to the island to investigate a new area of land created by lava flow 10 years prior to the expedition. He and his team landed via helicopter and began checking out the landscape. There, Crawford saw a lagoon with a very strange feature, an abandoned lifeboat. Crawford later reported that the abandoned lifeboat on Bouvet Island had no markings on it that would suggest its origins. It had no motor and no sails. He found the oars on shore along with the flattened copper tank and barrel. He was unable to do a thorough search of the area given the harsh nature of the terrain and the work that he had come to do. But what he was able to search of the landscape turned up nothing else. There was no evidence that people had stayed on the island or died on the island. There was nothing. Monsanto. Monsanto is an American corporation that was the leading producer of chemical, agricultural, and biochemical products. A major aspect of many conspiracy theories is a the fear that large agricultural businesses, especially Monsanto, are working to undermine the health and safety of the general public by introducing and promoting GMOs in the food supply. One claim is that Monsanto is deliberately hiding scientific evidence that GMOs produced by them are harmful. Falun Gong Falun Gong is a traditional Chinese spiritual discipline for mind and body. The practice involves slow, gentle movements and meditation. Its principles are based on truth, compassion, and tolerance. It was very popular in the 90s because of the health benefits, and its independence from the state and its spiritual teachings scared the CCP and they saw it as a threat to power. The Chinese government has done a lot to single it out as a cult, but it is now similar to orthodox religions. Uh, apparently to some people, it's seen as an anti-science, anti-democracy, anti-vaccination, rampantly homophobic cult. This, now this is just what people are saying about it. Uh, people that don't like Falun Gong, I guess. Apparently most members are uneducated, poor, or scammed into giving their life savings to the organization. They're the Scientology of China, and their leader Li thinks he's a space god. Among other things, one of their main doctrines is faith healing through chakra. So, yeah. Falun Gong. Pretty interesting. A biogenic oil. A biogenic petroleum origin is a body of hypotheses which propose that petroleum and natural gas deposits are mostly formed by inorganic means rather than the decomposition of organisms. Theories explaining the origin of petroleum as abiotic, however, are not generally well accepted by the scientific community and are rejected by most researchers and scientific theories on this subject. Vimanas. Vimana are mythological flying palaces or chariots described in Hindu texts and Sanskrit epics. Reference to ancient Indian flying vehicles comes from ancient Indian sources. Many are the well-known ancient Indian epics, and there are literally hundreds of them. It is claimed that a few years ago, the Chinese discovered some Sanskrit documents in Tibet and sent them to the University of Chandigarh to be translated and it is said that recently the documents contain directions for building an interstellar spaceships. Their method of propulsion was said to have anti-gravitational properties and was based upon a system analogous to that of the unknown power of the ego existing in man's physiological makeup, a centrifugal force strong enough to counteract all gravitational pull. Geometrodynamics in theoretical physics, geometrodynamics is an attempt to describe space-time and associated phenomena completely in terms of geography. Technically, its goal is to unify the fundamental forces and reformulate general relativity as a configuration space of three metrics and was enthusiastically promoted by John Wheeler in the 1960s and has continued to be worked on in the 21st century. 
secret societies today now this topic is uh i mean all it said was secret societies so and we've covered you know quite a bit of those but a secret society is a club or organization whose activities events inner functionings or memberships are concealed the society may or may not attempt to conceal its existence i wasn't really sure what to actually cover because we've actually i mean we've already talked about a couple secret societies you know freemasons we talked about bohemian grove illuminati the thule society but yeah we we you know we get the gist we get the gist north korea utopia now there's a couple theories that i guess can be aligned with the title of this one so i'll go ahead and get into them uh north korea has celebrated the completion of leader kim jong-un's signature construction project a new city near the sacred mountain where his family claims its roots with state media calling it the epitome of modern civilization the city was named a socialist utopia with new apartments hotels a ski resort and commercial cultural and medical facilities kcna said it could accommodate 4,000 families and has 380 blocks of public and industrial buildings the city is one of the most largest economic initiatives kim has launched the second part i guess uh could be everything we've learned about north korea being a horrible place through the media is just propaganda and there's a theory that there's actually an underground utopia in north korea and i think like once a month or once a day or something something like that they hold a lottery in which someone is picked and they have to live on the surface for a certain amount of time and they're assigned a job in order to keep the image of north korea being this shitty place to outsiders in order to protect their underground utopia tor owned by government tor is a free and open source software used for enabling anonymous communication by directing internet traffic through a free worldwide volunteer overlay network consisting of more than 7,000 relays in order to conceal a user's location and usage from anyone conducting network surveillance or traffic analysis using tor makes it more difficult to trace the internet activity to the user this includes visits to websites online posts instant messages and other communication forms and some people theorize that this web browser uh, was created and is even being used by the CIA and US Navy real Mizium. this one's about an exchange between an alien named Mizium and users on 4chan Mizium was supposedly running out of fuel just sitting outside Earth, which he called 0422. Um, it's pretty interesting. He posted pics of what people asked of him with specific coordinates. Yeah, there's apparently a picture of the UFO out there somewhere, but I couldn't find it. But yeah, it's pretty, pretty interesting thing. Len Font. All right. So I found like, <laughs> oh, fuck, I'm tired. I found like three different things about uh, this Lenfant topic. And um, so there. first off, there's a picture called Lenfant, better known as man and baby. And it's depicting a shirtless male holding a young baby. And it was distributed in the 1980s. And the photograph was said in the Herald to be a sensitive but sexy new man aesthetic yeah interesting the next one is about a short film uh with characters bruno and sonia bruno's 20 sonia's 18 and they're surviving on welfare checks and sonia becomes pregnant and while sonia is absent bruno goes to the black market and sells their baby to a human trafficking ring to make some quick cash so yeah and then he just tells the girl and he's like well we could just make another one <laughs> yeah yeah this last one i'm pretty sure this is the one it's about maybe most likely yeah but pierre charles lenfant was a french american military engineer who designed the basic plan for washington dc also known as the lenfant plan 
apparently some people believe that the street layout of washington dc is used to assert the presence of the freemasons or the illuminati and has some occult symbols including an inverted pentagram with the bottom pointing directly at the white house cave dweller holocaust in 1993 NYPD officer and caving enthusiast Chris Nicola visited Ukraine to explore the caves and found evidence that they had recently been inhabited by humans. After discovering that the caves were used by three Jewish families, comprising 38 people escaping the Holocaust, he embarked on a decade-long quest to find survivors. Now there's a, a there's an actual film about this and it interviews 36 survivors and their descendants who are now living mainly in New York City and Montreal. The families that survived down there actually broke records and to this day, they hold the record of living underground continuously longer than anyone else. Prison planets. Now this is the theory that the earth is actually a prison designed by aliens and some of the reasons people believe that humans aren't native to earth is because we get um, back pain and from a biological point of view it's because of gravity. Only humans are able to walk upright at least with like four legs or four limbs. Another reason is because skin is too fragile. Uh, apparently human skin is particularly unsuitable for Earth. Uh, it's afraid of sunlight and normal animals can survive outdoors for long periods of time without any problems. However, if we are exposed to the sun in certain environments for 10 minutes, we may become allergic to it or even get burned from it. Uh, we get chronic stomach flu and it's not found in animals and there are certain diseases we get that animals are not prone to. Yeah. Apparently humans are biologically more fragile than other animals and can catch a cold to, due to temperature fluctuations. We can't eat unprocessed food. If you eat it raw, you'll get sick, but animals eat raw food and they don't get sick from eating raw food. Uh, these are just some of the reasonings people laid out there for this topic, so yeah. Grand Unified Conspiracy Theory. It's a theory that looks at multiple conspiracies and organizations and tries to piece them together in order to explain a core agenda. The components of this theory include a vast network of individuals and groups that control many, if not all, the power centers of society. This includes political, banking, media, entertainment, intelligence agencies, military, educational institutions, and universities, as well as international organizations and corporations. Trilateral Commission the Trilateral Commission is a non-governmental, non-partisan discussion group founded by David Rockefeller in July 1973 to foster closer cooperation between Japan, Western Europe, and North America. Basically, the theory on this one is that uh, think tanks connected to the Trilateral Commission cranked out volumes of studies that drone on and on about the new international economic order and the need for political change and some people believe that they are trying to form a new world order. Malta Catacombs There are hundreds of catacombs in Malta and most of them are found in the neighborhood of Sidia Vecchia, the old capital of the island. The catacombs are pretty small but they're generally in good preservation. Many of the catacombs were included on the antiquities list of 1925, and there were bizarre skulls that prompted wide speculation at the time, and still do. Some of the individuals had mysterious elongated skulls, and many people wondered what the significance of them were. One of the earlier ideas was that the remains represented a whole new race of humans, or new mutation, while others suggested that it had some religious implication or was some sign of status. Other more far out theories have been that they are the remains of ancient aliens or interdimensional time travelers, while others say they were attempts to enhance psychic abilities or even that they were remnants of a displaced population of the lost continent of Atlantis. Cyber Squatting Time Travelers Cyber Squatting 
according to the United States federal law, is registering, trafficking in, or using an internet domain name with bad faith and intent to profit from the goodwill of a trademark belonging to someone else. The Cypress Squatter then offers to sell the domain to the person or company who owns a trademark at an inflated price. So yeah, basically what this theory is, is that there are time travelers that know companies or trademarks that are going to get pretty famous and big, and they take the names and uh yeah do this whole cyber squatting thing yeah dolphin intelligence dolphins are pretty intelligent dolphins have been observed teaching each other new ways to use tools and that certain behavior has only been found until now in only humans and other great apes and it's also known that dolphins transmit knowledge within the same generations and rather between generations and it's significant because it shows a uh, social learning between peers and that's pretty rare in nature. Dolphins are known to chase fish into abandoned giant snail shells on the seafloor and then bring the shells to the surface and shake them with their noses and try to try to make the fish fall out. And yeah, dolphin mothers usually teach their children how to hunt and how to use tools kind of. Yeah. Dolphins are pretty smart. They also no, I'm not going to say that. Amphibians in Iraq. Iraq, encompassing both terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems, is ecologically diverse. In southern Iraq, a vast wetland is found and used to cover more than 1,500 kilometers. These are the most ancient Mesopotamian marshes with their southwards water network of the Shat al Arab River. Unfortunately, these vital wetlands, with their rich biodiversity, have been destroyed for military and industrial purposes over the last four decades. The damage was so huge that all the recent efforts to restore the wetlands did not cover more than 30% of the original area, and many amphibians are beginning to die out. Comic-Con Child Recruitment um, This is basically just about certain people picking up minors, posing as recruiters for like modeling shoots, films, and or trafficking rings at Comic-Con. Um, it's mostly done by predators or you know, child traffickers, and the targets are mostly young women in uh, provocative outfits. They usually try to lure the people in by saying things like, we can make you a star, or you're so beautiful, we can make you rich, come with us. And one can even say that these predators or traffickers are leaders in the pretty prominent industries of like uh, Marvel or DC, that type of stuff, and say, for example, we need to make quote unquote nerd culture more accessible to women by creating or promoting heroines in superhero films and these uh, certain provocative outfits so that we could easily find these types of women at Comic-Con or children and have these predators take them and move them into child trafficking rings. Meat showers. Pause. The Kentucky meat shower was an incident occurring between the hours of 11 and 12 o'clock for a period of several minutes on March 3rd, 1876, where what appeared to be red chunks of meat measuring approximately 2 by 2 inches, with one being at least 4 by 4 inches, that fell from the sky in a 100 by 50 yard area near the settlement of Rankin in Bath County, Kentucky. There's a few explanations as to how this occurred and what the meat was, the most popular being the vulture theory, in which a group of vultures regurgitated their meals after being startled into taking flight. The exact type of meat was never identified, although various reports suggested that it was beef, lamb, deer, bear, horse, or even human. Phantom kangaroos. A phantom kangaroo is a report of kangaroos, wallabies, or their accompanying footprints in areas where there is no native population. Some explanations put forth for this are escaped zoo animals or circus animals or publicity stunts by local businesses using fake footprints or photographs from Australia. Plastic surgery runaways. This one's pretty simple, just really about people who completely run away, abandon their past lives, and then get plastic surgery so that they can never be identified ever again. 
Himalayan zombies. Now, this one is like a folk tale. A llama was brought down from a monastery in Tibet to officiate the house of a dead man in a nearby village. They were required to stay with the body performing the rites of the dead until the time came for burial. It was known that the man in question didn't really live a good life, so the rites had to be performed repeatedly. And the llama had to sleep in the same room where the body was, kept tied up in a sitting position against the wall and covered in scarves and bandages. During the night, a neighbor was passing by and saw the corpse in the corner move. With the noise like ripping cloth, it began to tear the bandages that bound it. He turned and fled, and as he did, he saw the corpse begin to creep across the floor towards the sleeping men. It moved like a dog on all fours. The neighbor then fled the room, hearing the screams of the men as it attacked them. In the morning, both the men were dead, and the corpse was back in the position on the wall. All the clay pots and drinking bowls in the room were smashed, and the bandages and scarves were torn and scattered about. Potomsky Crater Potomsky Crater is a peculiar rock formation located in southeastern Siberia. It's a large mound made of shattered limestone blocks on the slopes of the Potom Highlands in an area of a dense taiga. Its base diameter is about 160 meters and its height is about 40 meters. The cone's crown is ring-shaped and in its center is a smaller mound with a height of about 12 meters. Its origins have been subject to intense scientific interests with hypotheses including meteorite, volcanic and gaseous origins, but to date, no definite proof has been given. It is estimated to be only 300 to 350 years old. Life Tide. Now, Life Tide is just uh, a book released in 1979 by Lyle Watson who is a biologist and writes with the flow of like ideas, imagery, and observations into contact with deeper forces he believes underlie life. He explains how the dust is consumed by stars, cooked and regurgitated to form planets. He believes the new planetary area remains rich in dust and complex organics, and as the central star warms the system, normal chemical reactions speed up and a steady stream of carbonaceous material showers down on any orbiting body. Yeah, it's a, interesting. It's got some interesting concepts. Deep philosophies. I'm pretty sure this, this uh, topic is just about deep philosophies uh so i guess an example would be we've already talked about it but solipsism it's basically the philosophy where the only thing that you can be sure exists is you because you're conscious it doesn't inherently mean that you believe everyone else is fake but you just can't ever truly be sure thomas pinkin Thomas Pynchon is an American novelist, and he's noted for his dense and complex novels. His fiction and nonfiction writings encompass a vast array of subject matter, genres, and themes including history, music, science, and mathematics. Along with his emphasis on socio-political themes such as racism and imperialism, his awareness and appropriation of many elements of traditional high culture in literary form Pinkin explores philosophical, theological, and sociological ideas exhaustively in approachable ways. Baltic Anomaly The Baltic Sea Anomaly refers to the interpretations of an indistinct sonar image taken by Peter Lindbergh, Dennis Aberg, and their Swedish Ocean X diving team while treasure hunting on the floor of the northern Baltic Sea. The team suggested their sonar image showed an object with unusual features of seemingly non-natural origin, prompting speculation published in tabloid newspapers that the object was a sunken UFO. A consensus of experts and scientists say that the image most likely shows a natural geological formation. Civil War Sightings Uh... uh I think... There's two ways this topic could have been pointing to. Uh, the first one could have been about Civil War soldiers that either wrote down that they had come in contact with uh, extraterrestrials or UFOs, or it could be about the sightings of Civil War ghosts. I didn't really find much on the first topic, but I'm sure there's some out there. Civil War so soldiers coming in contact with like cryptoids or UFOs or that type of stuff. But other than that, there's plenty of footage of people claiming to see Civil War ghosts. So, yeah. 
animism. Animism is a belief that objects, places, and creatures all possess a distinct spiritual essence. Potentially, animism perceives all things, plants, animals, rocks, rivers, and weather systems as animated and alive. Animism is used in the anthropology of religion as a term for the belief system of many indigenous peoples, especially in contrast to the relatively more recent development of organized religions. Planned extinction. This refers to the decision making of environmental conservation using the concepts of medical triage. In medicine, the allocation of resources in an urgent situation is prioritized for those with the greatest need and those who would receive the greatest benefit. People believe that ecological triage differentiates between areas such as first world and third world countries and those who would benefit from preventative measures and those that are beyond repair. M-I-R-L cults, or uh, meet in real life cults. Uh, this is basically just about cults that can be formed online and then meet in real life. <laughs> Diane Rock. The Dighton Rock is a 40-ton boulder originally located in the riverbend of Taunton River at Berkeley, Massachusetts. The rock is noted for its petroglyphs, primarily lines, geometric shapes, and schematic drawings of people, along with writing. The car designs an ancient and uncertain origin has led to controversy about their creators. State officials removed the rock from the river for preservation. It was installed in a museum in a nearby park called Dighton Rock State Park, and in 1971 it was listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Haunted Locations World Map. Now for this topic, I just I just searched Haunted Locations World Map and I've got one for y'all and each highlighted spot is a haunted location. If you could find a trend in it, uh, I mean, you're welcome to do so by looking at it here. I noticed there's not a lot of haunted spots in Africa, so yeah, that's cool. Cool. All right, next. Toronto Protocol. The Toronto Protocol is an alleged leaked Canadian document that appears to be a deep state manifesto by a group named 666, and it discusses plans to create an integrated network of computers funded by entertainment and humanitarian aid for the purpose of controlling humanity via mass distractions and debauchery. By all accounts, the document at the very least speaks to developments playing out today, suggesting other plans revealed might soon come to pass. Bunkers in Mars. Haim Ashed, who is currently a professor, says both the United States and Israel have been dealing with aliens for years, and claims that there's an underground bunker on Mars with human and alien representatives. This was reported by him in the Jerusalem Post. Apparently, the Galactic Federation wants to prevent mass hysteria because it believes humanity needed to evolve and reach a stage where we will understand what space and spaceships are. I'll note that this guy, uh, Making the claims was a retired brigadier general in Israeli military intelligence, and he's currently a professor in uh, aerodynamics, and yeah, so he's got some tenure, so pretty interesting, pretty interesting stuff. Artificial poisonous snow. Spray-on artificial snow can contain a solvent called methylene chloride that evaporates quickly. Like all aerosols, they should not be sprayed into an area with poor airflow in a small closed space or near flames. Inhalation of the methylene chloride can cause toxicity depending on the severity of the exposure. Mild symptoms can include headaches, nausea, mild drowsiness, giddiness, and unsteadiness or difficulty walking. If there's a severe exposure, it is possible to experience symptoms such as fainting, heart palpitations, seizures, and chest pain. Artificial snow on the skin can cause irritation, especially for those with sensitive skin. If you come in contact with it, the product should be washed off well with soap and water to minimize irritation. The Perestroika Deception the Perestroika Deception was a book that's about uh, Soviet Russia faking its own death in the 1990s as a way of lulling the West to sleep over the communist threat, thus advancing its world communist agenda unhindered and in the shadows. Yeah. Triassic Mystery 
Geologist G. E. Hazen found an unusual tooth from the Triassic Chinle Formation of Arizona and gave the tooth to paleontologist Edwin Colbert. It was unlike any fossil found before, having a curved shell-like shape. And that's as far as the story of the tooth went until 1984, when Lynette Gillette found a similar tooth in Petrified Forest National Park. This was enough to reignite Colbert's interest, although he couldn't confidently assign the teeth to any known group. He was still studying them when he passed away in 2001. King Babylon's World Control. This topic is basically about uh, Nebuchadnezzar II. It's about the kingdom still holding roots that led to like world domination and they're secretly in power today. It's kind of like the conspiracy theory that Rome, the Roman Empire is still controlling the world. Yeah, kind of like that. Presentism. Presentism is a historical term meaning judging past actions by today's standards or uncritical adherence to present day attitudes, especially the tendency to interpret past events in terms of modern values and concepts. And some people like the idea of presentism and some people don't, so it's a pretty controversial topic. Montanism. Montanism is named for its first proponent, a certain Montanus from Phrygia in Asia Minor in what is today Turkey, who began a spirit-filled movement within the area sometime around 165 CE. He was shortly joined by two women, Priscilla and Maximilla. All proclaimed that they were filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied about the return of Jesus Christ as imminent and that the new Jerusalem would be established in the city of Papauza, also known as Montanism's most holy city. Depopulation funds. Now this topic is basically about uh, millionaires, very high class people funding uh, depopulation basically. Uh, a lot of people believe that the pandemic was initiated to restrict our movement and remove our freedom. The funding of 5G is used to control, uh, it's used as a massive mind control system and cell phones and smartphones are used to track you. Uh, there's a lot about um, mentioning Bill Gates in this one and yeah. BOT's void. The BOT's void is an enormous, approximately spherical region of space containing very few galaxies. It is located in the vicinity of the constellation Beotes, hence the name. This is just a pretty interesting uh, place considering how empty it is and the universe is ever expanding. Sabince Tomatovic tape. Sabince Tomatovic was the name of a woman who claimed to be sexually assaulted or raped by a giant spider that was four feet in size. Tomatovic went on to say that she wasn't alone when this terrifying incident occurred and supposedly it was filmed and subsequently circulated. This led to her quickly becoming an extreme focus in Japan's underground Genki Genki circle and since then she's allegedly been the star of pornographic videos featuring giant centipedes and gastropods. Since the story became well known, many claim to have seen the video, but no footage has ever surfaced. SCPs based on real life. The SCP Foundation is a fictional organization documented by a web-based collaborative fiction project of the same name. The SCP Foundation is responsible for locating and containing individuals, entities, locations, and objects that violate natural law. And the real world website is community based and includes elements of many genres such as horror, science fiction, and urban fantasy. And many people believe that the special containment procedures are not, not actually fiction, but based on real life events. Cuban Yellow Balloons In 1967, during the Cold War, a crate was discovered floating off the coast of Florida near Hallandale. It contained seven inflated yellow balloons and was addressed to the Institute of Mineral Resources in Cuba from Leningrad. Investigations revealed that the crate had been floating in the ocean for at least eight weeks and there was only air in the balloons. There was no indication of toxic substances inside or surrounding the balloons. A similar empty crate was found 217 kilometers away off Marathon. Both boxes were marked as weighing 50 kilograms, but the balloon filled crate only weighed 14 kilograms. The Coast Guard wasn't convinced that it was all a hoax, but the purpose of the balloons why they were inflated or how they ended up floating in the ocean still remains a mystery. Marco Rodin. 
Marco Rodin is a man who identified the longest free-flowing path of the electron and path of the least resistance. He used vortex-based mathematics and can create radical new thermal nuclear fusion reactor designs that eliminate the peripheral equipment currently used such as cryogenics and massive correcting magnets. This guy's basically a genius. Holotropic Breathwork Holotropic breathwork is a therapeutic breathing practice that is intended to help with emotional healing and personal growth. It's said to produce an altered state of consciousness. The process involves breathing at a fast rate for minutes to hours. This changes the balance between carbon dioxide and oxygen in the body. Driver killed JFK. Now this topic is, you know, just it, it's the theory that the driver is actually the one that killed JFK and I have the video clip and I'm gonna put it up for you guys but I have to censor out uh, JFK's head for obvious reasons but if you take a look at the driver you could actually see him and the passenger both look back and seem to point or at least stare in his direction a couple seconds before JFK uh, gets shot and this is why many people believe that the driver was actually the one that killed him. I'll let you guys look at the video and decide for yourselves, but yeah. Operation Paperclip. Operation Paperclip was a secret program of the Joint Intelligence Objective Agency, largely carried out by the special agents of Army CIC, in which more than 16,000 German scientists, engineers, and technicians, such as Warner von Braun, and his V-2 rocket team were taken from Germany to the United States for U.S. government employment, primarily between 1945 and 1959. Many were former members and some were former leaders of the Nazi party. Werner von Braun, including, was a German-born American aerospace engineer and a space architect. He was a leading figure in the development of rocket technology in Nazi Germany and a pioneer of rocket and space technology in the United States and also helped found NASA. So, fun fact of the day. Hermeneutics. Hermeneutics is a theory and methodology of interpretation, especially the interpretation of biblical texts, wisdom literature, and philosophical texts. Hermeneutics is interpretive principles or methods used when immediate comprehension fails and includes the art of understanding and communication. Fracking deaths. Previous studies have found that heavily fracked communities face higher rates of numerous health effects including preterm births, high-risk pregnancies, asthma, and cardiovascular disease. It was investigated that the direct relationship between the local increase in fracking and deaths by fracking from respiratory and heart issues can be attributed to each other. There was a study that showed air pollution from fracking killed an estimated 20 people in Pennsylvania from 2010 to 2017. Negative Planck Feedback Negative Planck Feedback is uh, the higher the temperature of a radiating body, the more energy it radiates. This is a negative feedback and it is very strong. So the total feedback is negative for our Earth. I didn't really understand this one. It's one of those science ones that I don't get. But if you guys do, that's great. <laughs> sea People The Sea People are a seafaring confederation that attacked ancient Egypt and other regions of the East Mediterranean prior to and during the Late Bronze Age collapse, which was 1200 to 900 BCE. Their origins are undocumented and the various Sea Peoples have been proposed to have originated from places that include Western Asia Minor, the Aegean, the Mediterranean Islands, and Southern Europe. The Sea Peoples remain unidentified in the eyes of most modern scholars and hypotheses regarding the origin of the various groups are the source of much speculation. Esoteric Hitlerism Esoteric Hitlerism, also known as Esoteric Fascism or Esoteric Nazism, is any number of mystical interpretations and adaptations of Nazism. After the Second World War, esoteric interpretations of the Third Reich were adapted into new religious movements of white nationalism and neo-Nazism. 
Monarchism. Monarchism taught an elaborate dualistic cosmology describing the struggle between a good spiritual world of light and an evil material world of darkness. Through an ongoing process that takes place in human history, light is gradually removed from the world of matter and returned to the world of light once it came. Its beliefs were based on local Mesopotamian religious movements and Gnosticism. Cryptogeography. This is a really short one, but Cryptogeography is the study of mythical and mysterious places. Red Rooms A red room is a composite of urban legend and is supposedly a dark, hidden website service available on the deep web where you could participate in interactive torture or murder. This red room generally contains explicit harassment and torture subjected by command given by an evil person online or the audience that had paid to watch and or participate. Valis. Valis is a 1981 science fiction novel by American writer Philip K. Dick, and it is one book of a three-part series. Valis includes Philip's Gnostic vision of God, set in California during the 1970s. The book features heavy autobiographical elements and draws inspiration from Philip's own investigations into his unexplained religious experiences over the previous decade. Infrared laundry balls. One of the claims that is commonly made by makers of laundry balls is that they emit infrared waves that supposedly affect the washing by cutting off the hydrogen and binding factors of water molecules. The claim of emitting infrared is not false as such since all materials emit far infrared waves, in other words, black body radiation. Plant intelligence. Plant intelligence suggests plants might possess intelligence, memory, and learning, although the mechanisms at play may be fundamentally different from those of humans and animals. Um, examples of this is fly catchers, thorns on bushes to protect themselves, and just the overall evolution of plants as a whole. You could theorize that the plants like marijuana, shrooms, ayahuasca, and DMT were all evolved by plants in order to produce these chemicals as a plant would produce thorns to protect themselves. They would produce these chemicals in order to make humans feel like they're more at one with the earth and wouldn't want to harm it anymore. ICBM decoy. The Exo Atmospheric Reentry Vehicle Interceptor System, or ARIS program, was a component of the United States Strategic Defense Initiative during the Cold War. ARIS was a kinetic kill system launched from a ground based system and impacting directly to destroying incoming intercontinental ballistic missiles, or ICBMs, before the targeted ICBMs re entered the Earth's atmosphere. People speculate whether these ICBMs were actual decoys or not. I don't see why they wouldn't be, but the Eris, they had a lot of practice runs where the Eris successfully intercepted and destroyed mock ICBMs in outer space at over 160 miles. So, yeah, who knows if they're real or not? I have a feeling they were not, because why? But yeah, that's just the theory. Last Thursdayism. Last Thursdayism is the idea that the universe was created last Thursday, but with the physical appearance of being billions. Of years old it is also a counter to the creationism theory it's a pretty pretty interesting philosophy it makes you think Portia Portia was the wife of Brutus and this theory goes to say that Portia had the knowledge of the conspiracy to kill Julius Caesar but inherently was not guilty of Caesar's death because of it it said that she knew about the conspiracy and wasn't at fault and it suggested that no matter what Portia would have done or said Caesar's fate would have not been changed and that's yeah that's it that's tier four uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video um, again I'm sorry for being so late with this I'm gonna try to shoot the next one out as fast as i can probably within two weeks or so but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed we got six more to go uh i'll see you in the next one